Video games aren't exactly like the real world. So today, GameRanks brings you 10 Diablo 3 game concepts that make no sense. Number 10, when the town population is like 10 or 20, but the dungeon population is 3,000. Like the towns in Diablo 3 are tiny, there's almost nobody in them. And yet you go down into the dungeon and holy crap, there's like way more people here. Like everybody is way over prepared for the invasion of these towns. There's like armies of thousands, when in reality it'd probably take like 20, 30 people to walk into the town and be like, hey, we're conquering you. And the town folk would be like, yep, yep, you are. That's true. <sighs> Please don't kill all of us. I mean, seriously, what on earth are there that many cultists and demons doing down these things? I mean, that's a highly successful Facebook invite. Also, there is no job security down there. Their jobs are redundant. It's like they're all down there running cash registers at McDonald's while they're putting kiosks in. Number nine, repair costs are ridiculous compared to the rewards you get when you complete a quest. So you go on a quest and that means you use your equipment. So that means you need to repair your equipment. But the reward you got from the quest was not nearly enough to repair the the equipment. Players of Diablo 3, I would like to suggest that we are underpaid. Virtually, of course, but still, we should unionize and demand more for our labor down in the dungeons, rescuing these 15 to 17 townspeople from 26,000 demons and cultists. Number eight, you know what? Let's just expand that to repair costs in general. What the fuck? How do you expect anybody to even continue doing this kind of work for you? Somebody's gotta fight all these demons. You either cough up the cat or you're out on your ass. Number seven, Zoltan Cool. This dude tells you all the time that he's gonna save humanity. And then he cackles like a witch on Halloween, holding three black cats. Seriously, this guy can't stop laughing about how he's going to save humanity. Yes, I shall find a cure for cancer. <laughs> like, who does that? It's pretty obvious you're doing something that is evil and using something that is good to cover it up. You're a villain, dude. We're not dumb. And you go around and collect parts of his body to reconstitute him. And you go to this place called Cave of the Betrayer. Seriously. And there are these books in there that are like, oh, he's gonna betray you. Like, they play it in a way where it's not even a plot twist. And you know what? You don't even end up giving him the chance to betray you. You go ahead and betray him first. Number six, the Templar's overreactions. When the Templar accompanies you in battle, you know, he does a great job. And a lot of people prefer him over other allies. And you know what? He even has some really good dialogue, but sometimes he just says stuff that's like, what is up, dude? This guy views every single monster as an equal threat. You kill a big boss, he's like, the world is a safer place. You kill a spider, he's like, the world is a safer place. It's like, bud, what's the deal here? You do know that a spider is not nearly as powerful as Diablo, right? Like, you get that, right? Like, this dungeon isn't filled with supervillains, dude. There's Spiders are not a big deal. Are you afraid of spiders? It's okay, you can tell me. You're my best friend, Templar. Number five, Imperius' opposition to the player. Now, this guy may be the Archangel of Valor and the leader of Heavenly Hosts and the ruler of the Angiris Council, and he's a total badass and all that, but he does lose to Diablo. And do you know what happens when he loses to Diablo? This guy deflects blame. He's like, you know, that's, that's your problem. You did this. You were such a pansy. It's your fault that I lost to Diablo. What? Like, whatever, dude. Like, he even eventually tries to stop you from proceeding once Diablo reaches the Silver Spire. Imperius, you do realize I'm trying to do, like, some serious shit here like safe heaven. Why are you in the way, bud? Number four, the demon hunter's dual rapid firing crossbows. The demon hunter can equip a variety of weapons and most of them are kind of crossbows, like little variations on it. But a demon hunter can eventually dual wield crossbows that rapid fire bolts like a machine gun. It's seriously like, okay, this is not like the time this takes place in is like, oh, this hurts my head. I'm not saying it's a bad weapon or anything, it's good, it works, but it starts to feel like the first Matrix movie for a second there. Kind of half expect some techno music to start in the soundtrack. Number three, most of the skills the Witch Doctor uses. Yeah, it's totally understandable, we get it. Diablo 3 is not the most realistic game to ever exist. None of this stuff would really happen, okay? We get that, let's put that out of the way. But seriously, it totally makes sense when the Witch Doctor summons up a zombie bear. But why does he get infinite jars of spiders? How do you get infinite jars? Can you just materialize items, sir? If you can, why are you even bothering with this? witch doctor crap. Like, there's probably much more profitable things you could be doing with that power. Gold. Why don't you make gold? If they have to be in the shape of a jar, just make gold jars. But I don't imagine it's a magical power. Probably has more to do with the fact that nobody at Blizzard thought anyone would question this. Well, I'm questioning it, Blizzard! But yeah, why you got infinite jars, witch doctor? 
Boom, boom, boom. Number two, the best blacksmith in the world couldn't repair your items. I say couldn't because they patched this, but still. When the game was first released, Heydrich Amon, literally the best weapon and armorsmith in the entire world, couldn't repair things. You'd have to go to some other trader and be like, dude, need help. The bartender in New Tristram could repair your gear. Any of your gear, even the most powerful, mythical, ancient, you would think difficult to repair gear. And Heydrich Amon is just like, yeah, can't do that. Was he lazy or something? Was he just a lazy guy? You got more important things to do than repair your stuff. Like, what's the point? Like, you can't achieve the title of the best and then just stop. You gotta step up to it. Thankfully, in the patch, they made him get up off his ass and fix some items. And finally, number one, Magda telling you where she'll go and what her plans are. Okay, for a really long time during the game, Magda, you know that butterfly lady, spends her whole time telling you her plans and saying, follow me, in so many words. She even says to you flat out that the Lord of Lies, as in a liar, has been giving her instructions the whole time. You eventually do battle with her, but a little bit before that, you tell her that the Lord of Lies was lying to her the whole time. And she gives you this, he would never betray me bullshit. What is she dumb? His title is the Lord of Lies. And I sincerely doubt they mean like lying down. That would probably earn him the title of Lord of Nappy Time then. Ugh, the writing in this game. Oh, and also she killed the most iconic character in the Diablo series besides Diablo, Kane. Was it really worth it, Blizzard? Was it? Was it worth it? How worth it was it? Anyway, Diablo 3 players, these are not the only weird game concepts. You ever found any weird plot holes or things that just don't make any sense? We'd love to hear about them in the comments. Also, do us a big favor and click the like button if you will. And if you haven't subscribed to Game Ranks, now is the best time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week, and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. As always, we thank you so much for watching this video, and we will see you again here next time on Game Ranks.